Hey everybody, Brian from PMB Homesteading again. Got my goggles. It's time for the update for the large grow tent. I'm going to show you some changes I made to the lights because I'm not too pleased with you know these cables that come with these uh, 300 waters. They're so darn long, that you can't really adjust these to get the height that you really want. So I'll show you what I did in there. Let me turn it on. Get the goggles on. I'll bring the camera over. Okay, so. I did the same thing that I do to most of my other lights. I take these, and I take out the cables, and I replace these with wire, and I crisscross across the tops of these little, uh, I don't know, eyelets. That allows me to get these lights way up close to the top of the tent, and on the uh, normal grow, grow light hangers. Hopefully that fan's not too loud. I'll try to move over here to the other side of the tent so I can film one of these other lights. But uh, you can see that it hooks on there. At the top, I take the little uh, carabiner off of the, uh, the cables and I hook it on to the carabiner that comes with the grow hanger. And I put those together and then I have the crisscross cabling or the, uh, the wires go from these eyelets across to the corresponding diagonal eyelet. So it makes them, you know, you can hang this a lot higher because otherwise the max I can hang that is like here with those cables attached. So it gives me at least another almost, you know, 10 inches to 12 inches of height because those cables are usually around that same length. So now I've got it raised up higher because I was starting to see, as you'll notice, I was getting a little bit of leaf burn on some of my kales. And I was seeing leaf burn on my Mexican herb, the papalo plant. So I wanted to get that, these lights up higher so that way it's gonna give these plants the ability to get the light they need without getting that scald or uh, burn on their leaves. So I'm pretty pretty happy with how far this, how this tent's progressing though onto the actual far up. Like here's the, uh, the red Russian kale. We've harvested quite a few uh, meals so far out of this because this is more of a baby one right now and we, we like that to have that nice soft baby fresh leaf. And then over here you can see the uh, white Russian kale's getting bigger. We've actually harvested off the big ones for this for uh, one of the meals that Paula's gonna be making this weekend. It's a, uh, she likes to take the kale and put it into the meatloaf that we have, so it gives you a lot of nice uh, depth of uh, flavor and nutrients inside that meatloaf, and it cooks down to where it's like a, you know, just like anything else you stick in there, like if you put a parsley inside there. She chops it up and dices it up and uses it in the replacement as a parsley. But we do have plenty of parsley if she wants that too, because <laughs> the parsley, you know, it's uh, quite healthy and vigorous. But, uh, you know, everything in this tent seems to be going really well. I'm very happy. We've got a lot of the beta, the beta salad mix over there, that chard. You know, I harvested off once this week already, and you can see that we've already got more leaf ready to harvest on this. So I'll be taking that out. Uh, we've got the basil. Paul has been really hammering the basil, and I've been taking this, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to save some of these leaves because I wanted them to turn that purple color. And as they start to turn, I'm having to harvest the that stuff pretty often. So that's why we seeded some new trays of basil inside the mid-size grow tent this week. I want to let this stuff to turn into that purple cinnamon basil that's supposed to have a purple leaf, but I've never actually been able to let it get to the purple stage because we use so much of it for making uh, Polish salad dressings. Uh, chives are doing well. Uh, this is the Vates kale. We've harvested off this quite a few meals. And I harvested off a ton of this today. So Paula can use that in one of our uh, you know, the, the meatloaf. So, and I, I just love coming down here and just eating this stuff because it's so good. This Vates kale is really good. If you're gonna do any of the kales that I'm growing right now, the Russians are, are good, but this Vates kale is really tender. I mean, it's a really soft leaf. And even when it gets to this curly stage, it's still really soft at this baby stage. And I'm noticing that, you know, I'm getting more of the curl on the newer leaves that are coming up. And then like the first stage leaves, first true leaves look more like this. Whereas the later stage leaves, you can see, you know, the newer ones coming in down here, they already are more of a curl to them. So I really like that. And they're still really soft, so they're really good. And then over here we have some more beta, beta salad mix. This one here it was staying a little bit wet, so I've cut the water back on this guy. And uh, it seems to be coming back, but there's still some yellowish leaves in here. So I'm gonna see if I can get those, let those, you know, dry out and green up. If not, chop them off, feed them to the worms, you know, put them in my worm compost. But you can see back there, it's already starting to dry out and we're getting some really dark coloring and growth. I mean, you know, you've got this nice yellows. 
the really bright colors. You gotta look at it as the brighter your food, the healthier your food. So the brighter the coloration that is. And down here, uh, we harvested off for one of the salads we had this week, the uh, Mizuna Asian Green. And I'm gonna let that regrow and see what kind of regrowth I get out of that. And that's a really good green and it's got a nice mustardy taste to it. So if you wanna add some kick to your regular salad, we mixed that with our kale and uh, gave it a nice mustardy flavor to it. So that's really good. The uh, cilantro in the pots, I've uh, taken two of these already upstairs and put in the kitchen for Paula to use. And then these are the next two that are gonna go up. And then I've seeded some more of them over here. So they're coming along. And then some of the newer ones that are back there, they're kind of, you know, at the midway stage. And then we also have another Mizuna green over here that's ready for harvest. And I'll probably take that as one of our dinner salads, or two dinner salads we usually get out of per tray. So that'll be, you know, two dinners out of that flat of Mizuna green. But then uh, I guess it would actually make probably three because we, we, don't, we don't eat just that tray of microgreens or greens or solid greens or whatever you want to call it. We actually take that and we, you know, split it up into a big bowl. And so you probably get three dinners out of that tray mixed with another one of our salads, we, you know, the greens that we have up here. So, I mean, we're getting, we're getting five salads, five dinner meal salads, you know, a week. That's what Paul and I have been eating. And it's like, you know, our son, he, He's a, he hasn't complained much yet, but you know, the one that, our one son that still lives here, but uh, you know, we're trying to get him to eat healthier and eat like we do. And so, so far he's uh, he's being a trooper. <laughs> I bet the guys at work are gonna love seeing him. They're probably harassing him about this <laughs> whenever I talk about him. Cause he, uh, he's more of a hot dog and uh, fries kind of guy. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not into the healthy stuff. All right, well, let me get the camera spun around back here. All right, get the goggles off. Well, this has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. I'll talk to you guys again. All right, hey Casey, I always have to give you props. All right. Love you, son. <laughs> Bye.